And so what we have here is an OPST uh, intruder shank. I believe these are the um, 60 millimeters. Obviously not 60 millimeters long. Those are our long shanks. Um, I use these to cut to length to where um, I want them. Uh, I don't. I don't like to cut the other two sizes because they're kind of perfect for what I use them for. But the longer ones, like if I'm not tying a giant fly, I'll trim them a little bit shorter um, to match what I need. So that's what I really like about these these 60 millimeter intruder shanks. Um, so I have my shank rigged with uh, just a regular trailing wire um, and some lead eyes, which we'll show you how to do in a in a future video. We're using 30 pound uh, Fireline Ultra 8. Um, it's a really nice way to mount that hook in. Just a really quick measurement. Um, we want to make it just so long that the uh, that the uh, swing hook can fit through there. So here's another hook. You can see that the trailing wire is just as long as the shank. So um, that way you can change hooks out later. But no longer than that. Um, we're going to actually make these materials longer than the hook, so we don't have to worry about hooking fish in the wrong spot. So what I'm going to do now to finish just get this thing started is to get a dubbing loop going we're building a shoulder today out of um, pro sport fisher american possum and red ice dub make sure we wax this real nice um, to help build a bonded assembly in here any wax will do there's no particular one that's better than others So we're going to load it into our dubbing loop and then we're going to hold it up and measure. You see how I'm moving this back and forth. I don't want this to come any farther than the hook eye as far as where like most of the um, flash and stuff is ending. And so what I'm going to do is as I look and see, you can see some of that's a little longer. So I'm just going to come in here and nip that back real roughly so it's not even cut. I don't like them even cut like that. I want them to look uneven. We'll take our OPST dubbing spinner here and throw it into the loop to hold everything together and then I'm going to spread this out ever so slightly you can kind of see where it's thicker and where it's thinner and we're just going to try to slide that around a little bit take your bodkin and use that if you need um, and then we're going to trim up the butt ends to a certain length the longer you trim your butts um, the more spring it'll have and the more shoulder it'll give you the shorter you trim your butts the you know, opposite will happen. It'll be a little softer shoulder. We're going to go with a pretty soft shoulder. Um, so those, these sex panthers are designed to kind of look like a leech fly without with the same, you know, the same uh, proportions and the same profile as a leech fly without having to throw a bunch of rabbit in there and all that. You know, I mean, I don't mind rabbit myself, but some folks have a hard time casting it and it can be messy and wet and all that. So this is just using ostrich to kind of get the same effect as the as the 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 rabbit. Once we're done, we take our bodkin and uh, come through and pick it all out. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. You can kind of hear it popping and. and and ripping some of the fibers that are caught up in there but you only got to do it once or twice i work all my way up and try to free some of that flash and i work my way back down and i try to free some of that flash and then i'm going to hammer on this with the toothbrush and then we're going to call it good it's all brushed out and everything's kind of clear so now there's a couple of things we're going to do to make this wrap on really well. Let me straighten this out. But, um, we uh, pluck it. Make sure the open end of the dubbing tool is facing you. We pluck it like a guitar string to get all the materials centered. And we start brushing it one way real fast. And then we're going to hit it with some water. Which I need to grab. And um, uh, fold it back over the thread. And I'll show you what it looks like in a sec. But we... I always have a cup of water on my desk when I'm tying like this, when I'm building shoulders. You want to slick everything back and it'll dry out and fluff back out. And You know, a wet fly outside of the water doesn't look the same as a wet fly in the water, so don't worry about it getting smashed up too much. So we're really pinching that thread and pulling across. So as you see, I'll hold this up for you guys to see better. Everything's going one way. 
everything's moving one direction. And I'm going to do that even more. I'm going to really encourage that as much as I can because I don't do touching wraps with this. I, I almost leave a mini gap in between each wrap, like imperceivable, so they don't, you don't smother this, all this material. So now I'm going to wrap. Um, I start my first wrap back behind where the thread bump is from tying everything in. I start it on the tinsel because I'm going to cover up all that gnarly you know, tying in stuff. So. so that's about four wraps, four and a half wraps is what I'm going for. This is more like five, that's fine. Winter fly. So <clears throat> tie it off really fast. And that's the shoulder. That's all there is, all there is to it. You lay down some you know in this case I'm using possum. A lot you know a lot of folks use fox. I use a lot of Arctic fox. That's all there is to it. Here we're going to take OPST ostrich um, and I'm using a barred orange. You can see what I've done to these feathers is I cut out the use I cut them into usable sections like so and then I'll insert this whole thing into the dubbing loop and then cut it off the stem. That way you don't have to worry about things getting uneven and whatever. So another loop, same as before. And then I'm going to use just this one chunk extended past the hook by about a quarter inch or more. I want the hook to not be behind any of the materials. I want it to be inside the materials. That way, even though I have a little bit of a longer wire, trailing wire, um, I don't have to worry about those fish getting pipes. So if you look at how I'm measuring, I'm pulling my thumb up here and I can see it's past my, past my uh, hook by a bit. I might shorten that up just a hair, but not too much. Not too much. And we'll come back in and trim it right off the stem. That way we don't have anything uneven. Do be careful, don't trim your threads. Cut right off the stem, it exposes some of the shorter ones you can pluck out that you might want to pick out later and then kind of get everything organized. And there's a trick to spinning ostrich and I'll talk to you about it a little bit here. We're going to A, put the bodkin in our hand to make sure that none of this collar gets stuck in there as it's spinning, but we're going to spin this slow. So I'll start, I let it go pretty quick and I spin it pretty hard, but we'll watch. I've got, I'm holding the collar back and then I slowly start to release the tension to let it spin up. This is so the ostrich doesn't get wrapped up in the thread. I went to a lot of trouble here to make this all segmented and different and we don't want to then hit this and spin this so fast and so hard and I, that it'll it'll tangle real bad. It's starting to so just come in with your bodkin and free it up. So ostrich is spun. Um, I give it some tension to make sure that everything kind of moves into the position it wants to stay in. Um, I do want to clear some of this hair off the thread. It'll wrap around the thread. So that's clear. I'm going to do the same thing I do with every other composite loop minus the water. People do sometimes wet down this ostrich. I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to bend it past the thread all going one direction. Folding it over, pinching even the butts. I want the butts going back because you're going to see I won't tie in the butts or I won't wrap over the butts. So now we're going to wrap. This is the same kind of thing. I want them one wrap in front of the other. I don't want to smash them together, but see how I'm pull. I don't know if you can see in the video, but I'm pulling back the butts, and none of the butts are getting stuck under each wrap. So that those butts are helping give it some spring. Not a lot, just enough. And we do it this. Now we're going to just take a uh, Nature Spirit um, Red. Marabou feather, and we're going to measure the length to make sure that we're not impeding. We don't want the, we want the fibers from the marabou to not be as long. I want them to be shorter than the fibers on the, um, the fibers on the ostrich. That way everything still has a nice proportion as it's separate. It's not just all one big mass of material. So proportion's important. You'll hear us talk about that, but... If you don't proportion a fly correctly, you end up with everything being one length and it just doesn't look alive. I'm going to go ahead and tie this in by the tip. Be very careful. I'm tying it in very, very far into the tip because I want a lot of wraps out of this. So 
Um, I'm definitely using a very thin part of the feather, so I'm not going to put a lot of pressure when I wrap this. You don't have to. Um, so we're going to scissor fold, which again is just taking the, the blunt corner of your scissor and running it not very hard just to kind of break the membrane and get the individual fibers folding back the way you want. I use a little bit of moisture, spit or water right here just to help get it started, keep everything out of the way and then again we're just palmering this down. So I'm finishing right up in the eyes and I'm going to flip it to make sure I'm finishing right up in the eyes, which I am. Um, and then we tie it in using the technique we learned from Caleb where we crisscross tie it in to three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's, I mean, I could pluck that right out and it would stay. I like to trim them out because every once in a while they break weird and we don't want that. But. So from here, it's a quick brush, but you can see how the marabou is distinguished from the ostrich. The marabou is not quite as long as the ostrich, and so that gives it a segmented look. Last two things we need is some flash and an overwing. So what we have here is some solid red um, holographic flashaboo. What I do is I take three strands and I tie them in either side. I want the thread to be in front of the eyes. Run it under. There we go. Longer than the ostrich. You want this longer than the ostrich. And then I'm going to pull it over to the other side. And then I'm tying it all over the top. Like it just because there's, it's going to be, I want it hidden underneath the wing. So it pops out as the wing undulates a bit. So kind of grab it and give it some poles. You don't want it stuck together because then it'll just look like one piece. So we're kind of separating it, giving it a little, again, negative space. That space between the fibers is just as important as the fiber or they wouldn't move. Second to last stage, we're going to throw in a overwing of, and I like to use a solid ostrich here. Um, you can, if I, you know, sometimes if I'm trying to get more impression of movement, I'll use a, a barred. You can use a barred ostrich over the top. Um, like I have here in this other version. Uh, it does give a nice impression of movement. For this fly, it's going to be a solid over the top, and that's kind of what we're going for. So measure. You want these. You want to find long ones. You want them to be longer than the stuff that's already in there, so we're going to use that side. And this is subjective. It's going to be based on kind of your, you know, how many, how many strands of ostrich you use for your overwing. It's going to kind of be based on, like, how much room you've left for your for your wing, how much you know of a carapacey looking overwing are you trying to create, whatever. So that's up to the tire. Um, but I like to use a pretty decent amount and I may even add more if it doesn't look like it spreads well. And then we're gonna measure, we're measuring. I want it just about a quarter inch longer than the ostrich that we spun in earlier and then so we can see, you can see the different proportion here. Um, it's a bit longer. So we want to go ahead and look at the front of this and make sure it's spread out. And I do want a couple more strands on the offside. What tends to happen is you get more ostrich on the, the, the side you're tying in than the offside that you can't see. So I always do look over from the front and see, okay, yeah, there's a lot here. There's, so I can add like three more strands on that side, and that's, that's plenty. That's plenty, especially the solid stuff because it's quite a... I had four strands, that's what I plucked out, but it's quite an effect over the top, so you don't need to go crazy, and it won't tie in very well if you go, if you go crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now my head's small, and the, the, the stuff, the, the overwing is tied in really really well. So I'm going to pull everything up. The flash is going to extend a little bit past the wing here. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm going to trim that off right even with the wing at an angle so nothing is too long or too short. So from there, just we just whip finish. And there you have it. Once it's 
tie it off in whichever manner you like. And I don't normally whip finish these. I just put a drop of cement, cut it, or not a cement, a Zappa gap, cut it off, and then um, UV it, and it's good to go. But in this case, we've got a little whip finish, and we'll drop a little drop of cement, and it's good to go. And I like to use this penetrator, hardest hole penetrator. It's a little thinner than the regular stuff, and it soaks in really well. That's kind of what we want if we're not putting goop over the top. So, and there it is. That is the Sex Panther.